Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today we're just going to be playing around uh, with a couple of things that I had picked up during the last Sephora 20% off that they offered for everyone. Uh, during that sale, I didn't pick up much. It was honestly just four things uh, because I am really just transitioning into not really uh, purchasing much of anything new. So let me just show you what I got before we get started. I'm going to insert some B-roll of the uh, things I'm wearing on my face because I did prep my face before. So we'll go over that um, in a minute. So one of the first things I picked up was something that has been on my wish list for about a year and a half now. And it is the Charlotte Tilbury the sophisticate quad uh this i held off on picking up because number one it's part of the permanent collection and i had to get through uh some eyeshadow palettes that i uh, wanted to get through and so i went ahead and i did pick up this quad uh, i really like the neutral shades in here I think this is going to be super appropriate for work and so I picked it up because I have been in a neutral shadow mood lately and I think that's what one of the looks I'm going to be wearing the most this coming year. So I went ahead and I uh, did pick up this quad. I did get 20% off of this quad so that was the first thing I purchased. The second thing I was able to get my hands on were the one of the Dior Attic um, Stellar Glosses. Not to be confused with their pump, plumping gloss. This is uh, just one of their um, hy hydrating glosses and I got mine in 721 Glitz. I originally wanted the Stellar shade which is the Lavender Holographic one but they uh, did not seem to have that in stock so this was my second choice these have been sold out for a while and I'm not sure if they are reformulating this or if the new maximizer glosses are replacing these I'm not sure because they've always had two formulas they've had the glosses which are these which are the stellar glosses and then they've had the um lip maximizers so i'm not sure but these are sold they're sold out in every color so i was lucky to even like be able to get this color at all and then i did get my hands on one of the tom ford uh soleil bomb frost this one is in the gold packaging not to be confused with the one from last year in the white packaging and this one was sunlit rose this is bomb frost and this is a lipstick that has you know the sparkly glitters around the bullet um, I picked one of these up, obviously, with the 20% coupon because these are expensive. And the one that I got last year, which was a Sunlit Rose, I really liked. And I, as you can see, I've used quite a bit. This one doesn't have so, gl so much glitter as it does have um, shimmer. And so I wanted to give that one a try because I really like this one. These only come out during the holidays. Uh, so I went ahead and I picked that one up. It, I know that I think this is not new. I think this has been around for a while. Um, I think this is just a shade that pops up every holiday season. Um, leave me a comment down below if you've had this for a while. How does it hold up? Uh, do you like it because I've only had mine for a year and I like it and it's held up well But the glitter on this is different than the shimmer on the one from last year, which is a sunlit rose lip balm 
All right, so uh, what I have on my face is my Bare Minerals uh, Original Foundation. I am in the shade Light, number eight. I did go ahead and set my face with my Bare Minerals Translucent Powder. Um, I also uh, went ahead and I applied some bronzer in my Too Faced Hot Cocoa bronzer. This is the one from last year. It was a limited edition um, and it smells like hot chocolate. So it is one of my favorite bronzers right now. <laughs> um, and then I did go ahead and apply some of the Chanel Rouge Profond uh, blush. As you can see, I am already panning that. I have been using that blush, um, I think since late August. And so I've made a pretty big dent on that. And then I am applying some of my Chanel highlighter. This was a limited edition highlighter and blush duo They can't, that came out last year's spring. And it's called Fleurs de Pretemps. I'm sure that I'm butchering that, but that is the name on the back of the quad and you get a blush and a highlight. I decided to pull this one out because the highlight is actually very uh, pink with a sort of reddish undertone, and I thought it would go perfect with the Rouge Profond uh, blush, since I have officially run out of the other highlighter I was using from Charlotte Tilbury. And then I went ahead and I primed my eyelids with my Urban Decay Primer Potion, and this is just the original formula. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, dig into this quad. I'm really excited uh, to use this. I know that this looks very basic and boring in the pan, but I don't know what it is about this that I love so much. When I see it in person, it just, it gives me all, all the feels, all the feels and honestly, most of my wardrobe right now consists of these cool toned taupes, browns, beiges, whites. So I think that I'm gonna be getting a lot of use out of this quad and I do love Charlotte Tilbury's eyeshadow formula. It is one of my favorites. I think that her formula blends like a dream and I doubt that this is gonna perform any different it's just gonna be amazing I know it so this is my second coffee of the day because my child has not been sleeping for the past three days she decides that she wants to wake up at like five and she wants to party and she's ready to play yeah it's fun times fun times Okay, I'm going to go in with my uh, Morphe A29 brush and I'm going to go ahead and uh, dip into that cream shade in the palette and I'm going to apply that all over the lid for just to set a base for what I'm going to go in with next. Just lightly dipping this in. These, I will do swatches as well, by the way. Uh, these shadows are super buttery and very creamy. This is not the first time I use, um, you know, Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows. And I'm just applying that all over the lid, dragging it up uh, to the brow bone because I'm also gonna use that cream shade as like a brow bone highlight. So I like to do first a wash of color because I have very green um, eyelid veins. And so I always need a little help in that area. Okay, next I'm going to go into that shade right here, uh, which is like this oatmeal kind of beigey tone. And I'm going to use that to apply it all over the lid. I'm going to use the same brush. And these shades are like a matte uh, finish 
with a satin kind of feel to them. Um, the brown one though has a bit of a sheen to it which I don't think the camera is going to pick up. It's very subtle. You, It's very hard to see to the naked eye and I doubt that you're going to be able to see any kind of sheen when you apply it because it is minimal. This is delicious so i'm applying this beigey tone just on the lid and this is kind of like a cool tone flesh shade it is gorgeous i think it sets the tone for what's coming next now i'm putting that all over the lid and uh, dragging it into the crease with whatever's left over on the brush, kind of like as a transition shade. Next, I am going to go in with my A20 brush. And I'm going to dip into this taupey shade right here and we're going to use this one obviously to add depth into the crease and I am going in ever so lightly and you can see how pigmented that color is that's gorgeous I love that. Let's go ahead and do the other eye. Uh, you really have to go in with a light hand with her shadows because I find that her shadows, although they blend very easily, like if you want an eyeshadow formula, you don't have to work at. I think that Charlotte Tilbury's eyeshadows are the most blendable formula I've ever worked with. They pretty much blend themselves. Uh, but they are heavily pigmented, so you have to be super light with them. Because it's better to build than to go in with too much and then having to make it work. That is stunning. Stunning. Next, I'm going to go in with my a11 brush and i'm it's clean i'm just going to buff everything out and soften the edges get rid of any skipping just gorgeous gorgeous All right, I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of the taupey shade just because I think I may have over, over blended. I may have over blended. Sometimes that happens. Okay, now I am going to use that same um, A20 brush and I'm going to wipe it clean here, my towel. And I'm gonna go into that deep brown shade and I'm gonna concentrate it just on the outer corner just to give this a little bit 
more depth just in this outer corner. Dragging the rest into the crease, going in with a little bit more. And I'm really just tapping that in. Wow, that's beautiful. I like, I like the transition between the brown and that gray. It's like a gray taupe is the best way I can describe that color. It's beautiful though. And this brown really does um, complement that shade. And notice I'm not dragging it in because I still want that gray to peek through. That's, that's stunning. I'm not going to lie. That's beautiful. All right. I'm going to go back in with the A11 brush and I'm going to dip into a little bit of the cream color and I'm going to use that just to highlight the brow bone and just clean off, you know, it'll, I'll use it to clean off any rough edges. And just drag that in here into the socket. Let's do the same thing to the other side. That is beautiful. And because I've been applying a lot of shimmer uh, lately, um, I kind of want to go in with the shimmer on the lid. But I'm just going to keep it like this because I think it looks beautiful. Um, I'm going to go in with my A18 smudger brush. And I'm going to go into the brown and taupey gray shade. I'm just going to go back and forth between those, mixing those colors. And I'm going to apply that here just on the outer part of the lash line. And as usual, no fallout with the Tar Charlotte Tilbury shades. We're just that good. Very high quality formula. This is definitely a luxury brand because, you know, these quads are very pricey for four for four shadows so but i think that it's just one i'm going to be getting a lot of use out of so the reason i decided to use a smudger brush and not a liner brush and i'm just slowly building this bringing it in halfway because I like the way that that looks better and do the other eye is because I want to create kind of like a very subtle smoke near the lash line that's still daytime friendly which I think would be a very nice look transitioning from winter to spring. What do you guys think? I think that looks pretty. I'm going to go back in with my A29 brush and I'm going to dip into that beige shade again. And just so that I can re-emphasize this inner corner here because I feel like I may have blended that away a bit much, a bit too much. So yeah, perfect. 
Now I'm going to go in with some mascara and I will be right back. All right. So this is the final eye look. It's like a subtle, taupey, daytime friendly, smoky look. I did apply some of my Tarte uh, Lights Camera Lashes Mascara for a little bit more of a dramatic effect. I applied some of my Benefit Gimme Brow in number four. And on my bottom waterline, I applied my Chanel eyeliner in blank graphique 949 this was a limited edition eyeliner so if you have this in your collection this would pair really well in the waterline with this uh quad but you've if you follow me and you watch my videos you know that i've been using this for quite some time I, i'm actually almost done with this um definitely pull this out and use it it's a beautiful way to brighten um the eye overall all right, so now let's get into lips. So because this shade is deeper than the Tom Ford Frost, I actually want to go in with the Tom Ford one first um, just to see how this is going to work out. All right. Oh, okay. That's very, very glittery. So my concern with this lipstick was that I w didn't want it to feel grainy on the lips because my white one, the Sunlit Rose, since it's shimmer, you can't feel it on the lips. And so I like to have glitter or shimmer or whatever in a lip product that's fine i just don't like for it to feel gritty or feel like i'm eating the glitter does that make sense so in comparison with the sunlit rose one and i'll show you that in a minute This is less um, moisturizing. So this is what it looks like on the lips. Very glittery. I have to say I like the white one better. And I'll show you a swatch side by side on the back of my hand. So here we have the one that I just applied, which is more golden in tone. And it is a true bomb, so you're not going to get a lot of color out of this. Um, it's going to have a slight pink undertone. I did build that up. It is beautiful. I love it. But I think I'd wear this as a topper more than wearing it alone. Versus this one. This one I've worn alone several times and I love, love the shade. So let me just swatch this right next to it. This one has pigment. See how pink that is? And the flex, the shimmer in here, gives it kind of like an iridescent lavender kind of tone. I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick it up, but... There you can see each color side by side. The rose, the sunlit rose one does have more color. And the glitter in that is iridescent with kind of like a lavender flex to it. This is definitely gold, like rosy gold. But I feel like the gold is very overpowering. And you can hardly see any of the pink glitters in it. You know what I mean? So let's take this one off and then now let's try the Dior Stellar Gloss in 729. So I took that off and the, it definitely left a lot of glitter on my lips. So I'm not mad about it. I'm just, you know, I, I think it's that I just don't like the color 
of the gold. I don't like the color of the gold. That's what it is. Okay. Here is a stellar gloss. Let's go ahead and swatch it next to the other ones. This is definitely a gloss that's highly pigmented. And there it is. It's that. Could you try? Again, I'm the worst YouTuber. Forgot to put this on cinema. Um, see how opaque that is? And that was just one swipe. You can definitely build this up. And I've never tried these before, so I don't know how amazing or how this is going to wear, but I'll keep you posted on this particular um, formula. And I thought this color would be perfect with this quad because it, it is like a brown, but it has a very neutral undertone. That's pretty. So this uh, particular gloss, I know the camera's not gonna pick it up, but it will on the lips. You can see it has a sheen to it. Very, very slight sheen. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up, but do you see that at an angle? This gloss has a sheen, so it's not a flat brown. It has a little something. It feels really nice. Doesn't taste like anything. And this has a very like faint, and when I mean like the slightest, faint scent of vanilla. I didn't... This is not scented. This doesn't smell like anything. Um, this looks beautiful in the bullet. It really does. And I, you know, I just don't think I'm a fan of that, of gold, you know, shimmer on my lips. I just don't think it goes well with my skin tone. I'll continue to use it and keep you posted on it. I don't know. <laughs> um, right now, I'm not a super big fan about it, uh, of it. So this though, I like it. So here's a final look. And then the final product I picked up was the Kaali Elixir Fragrance. I picked up the very small uh, bottle because I had never smelled this before. So this was definitely a blind buy for me. I uh, bought it based on the notes in the box. This is 0.34 fluid ounces. And it the notes here are Red Apple, Rose de May, Absolute, Jasmine, Su Jasmine, Sambat, Absolute, Vanilla, and patchouli and it is this black bottle with gold lettering and it says on the side of the box that this one pairs really well with citrus vanilla anything so any kind of vanilla um scent that you may have from kayali you can layer with this one and it'll be it'll smell good uh musk and vanilla and white flower and citrus so i like that they tell you what other perfumes this would pair well with which i think that the Jo malone line lacks so unless you see a, a Jo malone consultant in the department store that educates you on what what fragrances pair well with others um you kind of don't really know you're kind of it's like it's like a guessing game you know what i mean with kiali I, I like that they add that on the side of the box because if you don't like this fragrance alone, maybe you'll like it layered on top of something else. So let's go ahead and smell this. Okay. You can tell you right off the bat, I am getting really heavy patchouli vibes. Uh, that note, that patchouli note is very strong and that red apple is very strong. I'm getting a little bit of that vanilla though now that's drying down. I can't really smell too much of the rose de mai and I'm not getting too much of that jasmine sambat absolute it smells nice 
initially. It's my favorite. No, so I'm glad I got the small bottle of this. I don't own any of the fragrances on the side here. Um, so I don't have anything to pair this with, but it says it goes well with, you know, citrus-like fragrances, anything with vanilla. Um, so I may dig around in my fragrance collection and see how this pairs with other fragrances and I will keep you guys posted on this one. Right now though, it's okay. I'm not in love with this one, uh, to be quite frank. And because I'm the worst YouTuber in the world and I have no idea why you guys follow me, but I just want you to know that the little number on the front of the Kayali bottle, so this one says Elixir 11. Let me see if the camera's gonna pick that up. There it is, you see it? It says Elixir 11. 11, the number on the bottle, that's not how much it costs. That's not how much the perfume costs. It's how many variations it took for them to come up with this particular formula, this scent right here. Um, clearly, I don't dive into deep or any kind of research sometimes when I tell you guys I like something. Um, mostly because hey, if there's a sale coming up, I just want to let you know, hey, I really like this. This kind of smells like this. It's like a kind of like a speed re review. Again, not my favorite. It's, it's dried down for a little bit. But I'm the worst in my Love Fest um, video where I was comparing it to Tom Ford. Um, longevity wise on those two fragrances for me are basically the same. I think that the Tom Ford maybe lasts like half an hour more than the Love Fest and that for me is like not worth the whopping like $390 that that fragrance is worth. When I can get the same exact smell from Love Fest, Burning Cherry from Kayali. But anyways, in that video, 48 was on the bottle. And I had paid $48 for that fragrance because I got it on sale and I think I had a gift card or something like that. I know I didn't pay, um, I don't remember paying full price for that. Um, and so I thought, I didn't put two and two together, lack of sleep, right? I'm like, why would they put the price on the bottle? Mind you, I don't own, that was that first Kaoli fragrance I ever bought. I don't own anything from Kaoli. I just wanted to get on here because I knew that sale was coming up at Sephora and I wanted you guys to know it smells to me, right? Because fragrance is very personal. It's a very subjective opinion, not objective. Um, that to me, it smells exactly like Tom Ford Lost Cherry. So if you wanted something similar, dupe-like, the Kaoli one was one that you should try um during the sale you know and so i'm so a couple of you were so kind to be like hey girl hey hey um the number on on the bottle it's not the price it's how how many variations i just want you to know that when i read those those two comments first of all i laughed really hard really hard and then i was like typical me Typical me, yeah. So, honestly, by the grace of God, I even have followers on this channel, but I do wanna let you know that I appreciate you guys educating me because I'm clearly not here to educate you. I'm just here to show you the things that I like, um, how I apply them, how I make them work for me, and what I think. I'm not a perfume connoisseur. I am not a makeup artist. I'm just here to share my thoughts play around with makeup. This is my hobby. This is something I do for fun. And, but I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys letting me know because I didn't know. Clearly I didn't know. But now that this is dried down for the past like couple minutes, okay, the dry down is nicer. I'm still, this is really heavy on patchouli and red apple. That's what I'm smelling here. And it's not my favorite. And it's not my favorite. So I will not be repurchasing this. 
I'll continue to use it, wear it throughout the day, and I'll update you if I change my mind about this. But I do have to say, I am very impressed though with the Kayali fragrance line because this, I know that I don't particularly love it, but I feel like this is a scent that most of you would like. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those fragrances. And I like patchouli and fragrances, but I feel like sometimes it doesn't work very well with the chemistry of my skin. So it's a 50-50 chance that this is going to go south. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. So that was everything I picked up uh, during the sale. And I hope you guys like it. Um, I think this is a very daytime friendly office smoky look. You know, if you're tired of doing, you know, the regular really light smoky eye i think this is kind of a little bit deeper nicer and honestly it's not new so if you have this in your collection come on dig it out start using it uh if you guys if any of you own this one and you love it um give me your thoughts because right now not gonna lie it's choking me a little bit that patchouli is really coming in strong and so is the red apple and it's a bit much for me it's a bit much for me so but who knows maybe after two hours i'll love it who knows i'll, I'll keep you guys posted anyways seriously i'm gonna stop rambling <laughs> that completes this video thank you so much for watching and see you next time bye